truth uh, about life that no one ever told you. All right, so um, you got to imagine this. Now, some of y'all have babies. Hopefully, you have babies. I have a nine-year-old child, and I don't know about you. But when a baby's first born, and it comes, and you hold it, and you say, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful baby, right? What a perfect, beautiful baby. Give me some amens if your baby was beautiful. Amen to your beautiful baby. You say, this is a beautiful baby, right? And your first baby, you say, it's a beautiful baby, and then what? You say, shit, now what? <laughs> and that the truth? You say, what now? What do I do with this beautiful baby? What am I supposed to do? Who, where's the manual? Where are the instruction sheets? God forgot to instruct, give me the instruction sheets. This is up there in the uterus somewhere lost, right? So you, you've got to wonder about that. You know, how did we make it through? How did we grow up? Now here, this is why I tell patients, right? At some point, you got to remember you were that beautiful baby. And someone told you and held you that you were beautiful. And you got to remember, they didn't know how to, to raise you. <laughs> they didn't know how to raise you, man. Right? So now you grow up. You go through your high school years, college years maybe, professional life. You're a grown up. And then you say, well, what am I supposed to do with my life? Isn't that the question? What was I meant to do? What am I supposed to do? My life. My life. What am I supposed to do with my life? And here's the truth that no one ever told you about life. All right? And here's the truth. If you're writing this down, write this down. This is really important. The truth about life is this. You're responsible. You're responsible for your life. Everything you have in your life, you're responsible for it the good as well as the bad. If you have a great marriage, it's because you held out for the right, right man or right woman. You paid attention to him or her. You went to fancy dinner dates. You make it a priority to spend time with each other. That's it. If you have a crappy marriage, guess what? You married the wrong person. You jumped into it too quickly. You spend more time with your fancy football team than your wife. You, um, you spend more time playing video games than your wife. That's it. And that's why you have a crappy marriage. You're, you don't like your work? It's because you don't go the extra mile. It's because you show up late to meetings. It's because you call in sick when you're really hungover. I'm sick. And that's why you're not getting promoted. See, you're responsible for your life. We think it's the government's fault. We think it's something out there. We think if the economy got better. We think if the Republicans win power and get in. We think it's our religion. We think it's politics. We think it's our bosses. We think it's our mother. We think it's our upbringing. We think it's um, you know, due to the fact that we had kids too early. It's due to the fact that we never went to school. No, 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 no. That's not true. You're responsible for your life. In fact, here's tip number two. Tip number one is you're responsible for your life. So write this down. Tip number two. Tip number two. Do you have problems in your life? Yes, of course you do. Everybody's got problems in your life. You want to know the biggest solution, the quickest solution to your life? Write this down. Tip number two. If you were to die. Death would cure all your problems, wouldn't it? Death would cure all your problems. It would all be gone. Now, please don't do that. I don't want you to commit suicide. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But the, here's the truth. Here, think about this for a second. Try to hold your breath. Close your nose. Plug your nose up. Plug your nose. Try not to breathe. How long can you do that for? You can only do it maybe one, two minutes max. That's it. And then something within you will say, you know, forget your job. Forget your crappy marriage. I want to breathe. And you will spontaneously start breathing because you have to. There's this drive inside of you to stay alive, right? That's why the illness of uh, suicide, depression, anxiety, I'm not making light of it, is very powerful because it overwhelms your power to, to live, which is the most powerful drive that we have, okay? So what does that tell you? If the solution to your problem ultimate solution is death, yet you really can't kill yourself because it's inherent within you to stay alive. And you're responsible for your life. Then what do you have to do? I mean, you've got to take action. You've got to do it. You've got to control your life. You've got to stay up late and study. 
You got to quit going to the bars. You got to pay more attention to your wife, less attention to Facebook. You've got to pay attention to your kids. You got to lead by example. You got to show up to work on time. You've got to go to the gym every now and then. You got to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. You got to have salads. You can't stay up all night and buy 10 pairs of shoes on the internet and wonder why you don't, you can't make your bills at the end of the month. You're responsible for this life. Point number three, you're responsible for everything that is good as well as everything that's bad in your life. You're responsible for both. If you're responsible for one thing, you're responsible for all of it. You're responsible for all of it. I promise you. And that's the ugly truth that no one's ever told you. See, we think if we bitch enough, if we complain enough, other people will feel bad for us. Maybe other people will help us. If we tell our bosses enough how bad we've got it, maybe it will give us a raise. And here's the truth. Nobody cares. Write that down. Nobody cares about your problems. Why? They have their own problems. Nobody cares about your problems. In fact, they're happy it's happening to you, not to them. That's the truth. Give me some amens. All your bitching and moaning, posting on Facebook about how badly you were treated, everyone's laughing at you. No one cares. No one's there to help you. No one's coming to your rescue. I promise you. Why not? Because you're responsible for your own life. But here's the beauty. Here's the beauty of Dr. V's talk. Here's the truth. Truth number three. At any moment, you can choose to change that life. You can choose to change it. You can choose to stop drinking. You can choose to stop hanging out with your old college buddies. You can choose to start spending more time working your craft, going to trade shows, taking classes, going back to school. You can choose to read the books. You can choose to pay attention to your spouse. You can choose to spend more time with your kids. You can choose to become more disciplined. You can choose to learn to meditate. You can choose to go on a trip, vacation. You can choose to take that money on your Xbox and instead take it on a weekend trip with your wife. That's how it gets better. If your life is not what you want it to be, it can get better. And you can do that when? 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 Right now. You can choose to make that change right now. That's it. Ugly truth about life. One, you're responsible. Two, no one else cares about your problems. Quit bitching. Number three, you can choose to change it right now if you want. Cool beans? That's it.